Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific car breakdown from Forza Motorsport 7. This is another DLC car of course from the latest pack and I was hoping to put this review out on Friday but unfortunately the video wouldn't upload so I had to knock it forward a few days or knock it back I guess you could say. But this is a car which I have actually discussed on the channel before. It's got a couple of different livery versions. You've got the Spirit of America, the Spirit of Le Mans, the Spirit of Sebring. And it's a car which has gone through a couple of different mechanical setups as well. Now in the game, you're looking at a still relatively conservative 700 horsepower. It could have even had more than that in real life. So, it, as I said, it is conservative to say that it had 700 horses. It's certainly capable of that with the original engine. This is a car that hit 220 miles per hour in real life at the Le Mans. Of course, the old school circuit without the chicanes. It could do roughly a 354 second lap back then, which that's pretty good for its age. And it's a car which on Forza 7 is very, very beginner friendly, actually. It's very forgiving to drive. And for a car with this much power, this much torque, and a relatively low amount of weight, it weighs 1270 kilos, which isn't all that much. That's similar, for instance, to, say, a relatively lightweight super sports car, or even some supercars. Or even certain race cars, like a GT2 machine, for instance. So, that's pretty good, by today's standards. Now, the pricing doesn't matter too much, of course, because being a DLC car, once you've bought the pack, you get all of them for free, within the game. But, incidentally, they rate it as having quite an interesting price, 1,060,600 credits. I'm not sure if that number is supposed to signify something because it seems strangely specific, but still, a value of around a million credits, it's certainly worth that kind of thing, not just because of how fast it was, but also because it's such an iconic Corvette. It's one of those cars which stands out from any racing crowd, I was fortunate enough to see it at Goodwood years and years ago. It sounds even better in person, not too surprisingly, and later on. As I, of course, mentioned earlier on in this video, I discussed this car before on the channel, and later on the engine was swapped out to a nearly 10 litre, a 600 cubic inch, I believe it was a 9.8 litre to be exact, which is pretty monstrous, way more than 700 horsepower, most likely, around 1,000 some say. So if the original could do 220, that one could probably go quite a lot quicker, maybe 235, possibly 240, given the downforce and the tech, of course, of the time. But in the game, you don't get that. It doesn't have that monstrous engine, which from one point of view, you could view as disappointing, but of course, it is more accurate to the original to not have that engine. Personally, I would have liked it because, I mean, who wouldn't want a 10-litre Corvette flying around Lasart? But, either way, it's a car which, as I said, is deceptively easy to drive. It certainly doesn't look like a forgiving car. The C3 generation Corvette Stingrays aren't necessarily difficult to drive. But, of course, the fact that they're relatively long, but also quite narrow for the time, not like a muscle car, such as a Chevelle, for instance, which is quite wide as well, it tends to give them a handling signature which is fairly tail-happy, but also a little bit wallowy from side to side. They almost drive like a cigar kind of shape, like an old-school Grand Prix car, very long but very narrow. That's not necessarily conducive to track performance, but of course, when you take it and do this to it, with the much wider track, the fat, sticky tyres, obviously a ton more downforce, with, incidentally, a very nice little clear wing in the centre at the back, which I hadn't noticed that the car had before, almost reminiscent of stuff like the Chaparral 2J, which also, of course, had that clear rear wing, and also the track itself, the body itself being much wider, the suspension height, of course, being lower, it all adds up to making the car feel much more planted. Stiffer springs, stiffer dampers, it all adds into that. And as I said, it's such a pleasure to work with. You can absolutely fly around Le Mans, but also this feels for sure like the kind of car which would be a fantastic rival to pretty much any of the other old school silhouette race cars. From stuff like the Bluebird, to the 300ZX potentially, the, I believe it was the Bob Sharp Racing ZX as well, which was added more recently on the game. A couple of the others also, potentially the Mazda RX-7, I believe. It's a great rival to those. Even though it is older than a number of them, it can still certainly take them on because it's got so much power, so much torque, which many of those kind of ironically don't have. They tend to have around five to 600 horsepower, 
to this car's 700 straight out of the crate. So you can take it even higher if you want to. Of course, you can homologate it for racing if you need to, which nine times out of 10, you probably will need to. But overall, I'm really happy to see this car featured in the game. It is nice to see a car which I've discussed before. I mean, the series was unsung heroes. So by definition, it's one of those cars that doesn't get the recognition and the chatter that it deserves. So it's very nice that a game like Forza would feature the car to get more people to know it, especially people of a younger generation of petrol heads who didn't live through this time, aren't aware of the car for a variety of reasons, maybe their focus has been on more modern machines, perhaps from the 80s or 90s or 2000s, and that's the great thing about these racing games like Gran Turismo, Forza, Project Cars, whatever the case may be, when they do focus on the less obvious choices, it helps people to broaden their horizons as far as motorsport goes, or even road cars go, and again, that's one of the purposes of my series, Unsung Heroes, to shed light on those cars. So for me, it's very cool to see this car now added to the Forza franchise, and it's a great car to work with, I'm very happy to say. So, of course, stick around on the channel for plenty more reviews for a number of different Forza games stretching way back to the early days, and I will be covering another car in particular from this new pack, another favourite of mine, the Maserati Levante, fairly soon, probably in the coming week or so on the channel, so stick around for that as well, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.